to welcome all to the meeting of the Hudson School Board tonight, and we will start by standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I'd like to ask for a motion to go to closed session. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to convene in closed session pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 19.85, parent 1, parent F, to consider financial, medical, social, or personal histories or disciplinary data of specific persons, preliminary consideration of specific personnel problems, or the investigation of charges against specific persons, which if discussed in public would likely have a substantial adverse effect upon the reputation of any person referred to in such histories or data or involved in such problems or investigations. Do I have a second? Second. We'll do a roll call vote. Brown? Aye. Garza? Aye. Powers? Aye. Robson? Aye. Rosowski? Aye. Johnson? Aye. And Bauman? Aye. We are now in closed session. So we're, we're going to go over to the room. And now is the time for citizens' request to speak about non-action items. And I see that there's a couple forms being turned in as we speak, so. I was given Celeste Coborough. Okay. She wishes to address the board for uh, regarding Title IX. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. I did submit a written public comment, but I sent it in by email just before your meeting started. So you've got that too. And if you want some to follow along with, I have some extras here. But uh, basically, I wanted to say thank you very much for the uh, presentation on August 26th by the district's um, attorney about uh, Title IX the uh, current law and um, the 2024 Title IX regulations and their application to the Hudson School District. Um, it was very informative, helped give us a much better understanding of the kind of issues that you all are considering um, in decisions regarding adoption of any uh, Title IX compliant policies, such as the proposed policy number uh, 113 that was tabled at your August 12th meeting. Um, in short, we are here again to urge you to adopt um, the proposed policy uh, number 113 uh, in order to ensure that the Hudson School District is in fact compliant with the 2024 Title IX uh, regulations. Um, you know, your attorney laid out um, that the 2024 Title IX regulations do not create any new rights for transgender or gender nonconforming students um, under the, because of the existing case law in our Seventh Circuit. Um, <clears throat> that uh, most of the new ones are actually procedural, and they have to do with how do you handle complaints about sexual um, harassment or uh, assault, and those are most likely going to benefit your cisgendered students. Um, that you, the board, or the district, does in fact have an obligation to comply with the 2024 Title IX regulations, and that there are potential consequences for failing to comply. Uh, the most significant one that was identified by the district's attorney is um, complaints or litigation filed by a student who, again, most likely would be cisgendered uh, regarding sexual harassment or assault that occurred during a time period when the district did not have a 2024 Title IX compliant policy in place. And your attorney did advise you that um, there was a not insignificant risk that the district's insurer could um, uh, deny coverage, um, decline to defend, agree to a settlement that was uh, much different from what your board wanted, um, and most likely really jack up those insurance premiums in the future. Um, your district attorney also advised uh, the board that um, it would be quite unlikely that should you adopt policy number 113, that that would give rise to any kind of plausible legal claim by anyone who was opposed to the policy uh, in the absence of an actual incident. So it's relatively low risk 
in the absence of an incident to adopt the policy, but without the policy, you do face a significant risk regarding your insurance coverage. And then last, the district attorney advised your board that um, nothing in any of the uh, preliminary injunctions entered so far by any courts prohibited your district and your board from adopting a policy such as number 113. So when you take all of that into account, it seems to us that the most prudent course of action is to go ahead and adopt the proposed policy 113 and do it as soon as possible. We'd like you to do that. Thank you. From Boulder Point Drive, also on Title IX. Ingrid Blair. Hi, um, I'm Hello. a constituent of yours. I've had three children go through the Hudson School System, three graduates of Hudson High School, two cisgender and one transgender. I'm here just to appeal to you to have you understand that these situations, I can't speak specifically to the legal items, but I can tell you as a parent how important uh, it is that you follow existing laws and that you do your best to treat transgender children in a way that is appropriate and to some degree, I think we have a responsibility to them being the minority to really understand their needs. Yes, there's situations with sports, but there's situations just in the school classroom uh, where transgender kids uh, come under a lot of duress. And so I'd really uh, want to let you know that anything that you adopt as a school board, any policies, that you keep in mind the perspective of the minority, these transgender students who are also uh, really within your care. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, John Gostovich. Thank you. Um, I have been paying my property taxes in Hudson for over 30 years now, and I love supporting the school district, and I love paying for a great education for the generation that's coming up right now. I think you have a school district that you can justifiably have a lot of pride in. The kids I've met, the teachers I've met, the staff that I've met are really serious about the work they do, and I have the impression they do an exquisite job. For many years now, at both as a professional at the workplace and in my community, I have done my best to be an ally of gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender kids simply because I know how they suffer, I know how hard it must be for them, and I do what little I can to support them, to give them encouragement, to help them solve problems. I think adopting the Title IX policy is a way for your board to take an affirmative step in that direction. It will not change the world overnight and I'm not qualified to talk about the legal ramifications. But for you to make it clear that these kids are loved, that you cherish their participation, and you're willing to do whatever it is you can as school board members, as staff, as teachers, to make it a little easier for these kids because we all know it's not easy. And we all know that they have a much more difficult 
mountain to climb, certainly than I did. So I urge you to adopt the policy, mostly because it's a way to be gentle, loving, inclusive, and it's a way for you to tell members of the community that this matters to you, that these children matter to you, and that you're willing to go the extra mile for them because that can make a huge difference in their lives and it will earn you their respect and their gratitude. In 20 years when they recall what it was like at this institution, they'll remember a school board that went to bat for them even when that wasn't the most popular thing to do. So I'm gonna stop talking now. Um, I right. think you guys do a fabulous job, and I hope you can see clear to just simply adopt this policy, support these children, and be on the side of love and gentleman, gentleness and devotion to these children. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, so far, I want to thank the speakers for complying with the our general three-minute limit. We have still now two more speakers. Typically, when we have five or more, we go down to two minutes, but I'm allowing up to three minutes, and I also appreciate the respectfulness and the comments so far tonight. So with that having been said, Carol Stray, or Stry, um, from County Road A in Hudson, also wants to speak regarding Title IX. You have up to three minutes. Thank you, folks. Appreciate what you do. Real quick, I am a graduate out of Hudson High School. Uh, enjoyed every bit of it. I played sports. We had an awesome female soccer team. We went to regionals and went to uh, sectionals and won both. I have trophies to this day on those times. Um, we were pretty bad. I mean, we were awesome. And as a female uh, and a varsity team, sometimes we scrimmaged against the boys JV and we lost we would always lose. I'm very competitive. I like to think I can do everything guys can do, but they're always gonna be faster and they're always gonna be stronger. That's unfortunate as being as a female. Um, I definitely will you know, stand toe to toe as much as I can and anything uh, with them. Also going up in uh, high school here in uh, Hudson, if I could say identify as a boy to get in the boys locker room, sign me up, I'm in. I definitely would do that. And talking to some of my other buddies, and they said, yeah, I'm sure I would do that too. So you have to think about that too. Uh, I would like to think that everyone is treated equal, no matter what they're going through, mentally, physically, emotional. I was going to be tall, 2.3 kids, white picket fence, married, and a veterinarian. I'm, I'm none of those. But at that time, that's what I was going to do. So things do change, I get it. Uh, I just wanna let you know, there's, I'm not the only one, and I guarantee you, I would assign that dotted line or whatever I have to do to get in the boys' locker room, you bet, I'd be there. Stand for any questions? It's not our policy for us to That's engage, fine. it's just an opportunity for you to have public comment. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next up, Alexander Oswald from Sixth Street. I presume that's Hudson. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm here for Title IX. My wife's a graduate of this high school, and uh, my stepdaughter is actually in the middle school right now. So um, the only issue I would say is words of caution, because the biggest problem you have with adopting the Title IX policy is, is kids are young and dumb, and they can get in love and do something stupid inside the school, at which point we now have a legal problem beyond what most people can do. And I don't know all the legal ramifications, but last I checked, the age of consent is 18. So at some point, if kids get young and dumb, would you have a new problem on your hand, not just people in the bathrooms or in the locker rooms or whatever. And as much as people want to be good, they do make a tr bad choices in life. And sometimes there's simple mistakes that end up carrying on the rest of their life. So that's about all I got. All right, thank you for your comments. Thank you everyone again for being respectful. Now we'll move on to reports. And Nick, turn over to you for a back to school update. Uh, all right, thanks Jamie, I appreciate that. Just a couple things I wanna to touch on. We, um, 
We had a great start to the school year. Uh, we've had transportation has gone very well. Um, you know, we've had years when it hasn't gone so well, uh, and I think we can all remember back to those times, but it has gone very well. Uh, we had a great uh, staff appreciation back to school barbecue uh, on Friday nights. We had, I think, over 500, almost 600 people uh, that attended that. It was uh, tied to the, to the uh, football game on Friday night. Uh, so that was a uh, great situation going on. Um, we're going to be talking about the enrollment update coming up here shortly, and you can kind of see where we're sitting at least right now as we're moving forward. But all in all, it's been a really, really positive start to the year. We had a lot of positive feedback from staff as it relates to our uh, back-to-school meetings and things along those lines. And so just wanted to make sure I uh, shared that update with the board. The next update that I have is a construction update. As everybody knows, uh, we did pass a construction referendum uh, back in 2022, I'm sorry, um, 2023, and uh, we uh, have been working on designing and getting those projects off the ground. There was a little bit of delay in the projects when we first went out to bid, they came back over budget. We scaled some things back, we changed the timeline, we were able to bring those projects in a guaranteed maximum price that was uh, on budget. And so we're in a good spot with that. We did change, however, the timeline. All the projects were originally gonna start this summer. Now we're in the process of, uh, North Hudson is going to be uh, starting this week. Uh, we have a groundbreaking ceremony that is tomorrow at North Hudson Elementary School at six o'clock. All are welcome to attend the groundbreaking ceremony that will be there. Uh, EP Rock and, and uh, the middle school will not be starting until December. Uh, and they'll start in December. All three buildings will be done by the time school starts uh, next fall. And so we're working with the, our contractor, Market and Johnson, our architects, to make sure that uh, we're putting good phasing plans in place to have the least amount of disruption to kids and the staff during the school year. Um, but uh, we feel like we have, a, we have a really good plan in place right now. But you should see, if you drive by North Hudson Elementary over the next week, you're gonna really start to see the construction activity pick up there. So, any questions about construction update? All right, I'm not seeing any hands go up, so then we'll move over to Andrea and the enrollment update. Okay, so the document that's list, or that is linked up there, uh, it's just an update similar to what we had a couple weeks ago. Um, we are up since June about 30 kids at the elementary level, so we're at 1981. You can see with respect to our class size guidelines that um, we do have some darker greens um, at the Holton uh, in terms of the number of kids in each section, um, but for our over class size guidelines, class size guidelines, we have a couple sections that we continue to watch, but for the most part, it's really close to our class size guidelines. Um, then with respect to um, high school and middle school, um, a little lower than the August report um, at both the middle school and the high school, um, but pretty consistent. Um, really from June until September. Middle school is only a difference of five kids. High school had some fluctuations that we're continuing to work on, um, but they feel confident in the 1713 um, data point there. All right. Um, so uh, we're showing, okay, both now, the secondary as well. Any questions on the enrollment update? It looks like, you know, it tends to float from month to month. We've w watched it since June. Um, go up, down, back up again. Yeah, and it starts to flush out a little bit more now the kids are back in school. Um, and so some of the people um, that have moved over the course of the summer, it finally is reflected in these numbers. Third Friday count is coming up as well, and that's um, usually our most solid data point. Third Friday being September 20? Yes, I believe so. Okay. Ms. President? Yes, Rob. Having an additional 30 children is absolutely fantastic. Do we have any sense of open enrollment at this time? I don't know offhand. Of I, We've approved all the ones that have come in and um, are the ones uh, eligible for approval. Uh, I don't know in terms of the total approved how many are actually attending because that's always a point of fluctuation is that we don't necessarily know if they're attending yet. Um, but I think that's also um, detailed out in the third Friday count. Right. Any other questions? 
Hearing, seeing none, then referendum update, Nick. Yeah, uh, you can click on the link up there. We do have an operational referendum uh, for November. It's on November 5th. Uh, the operational referendum, you'll be able to, uh, you can click on uh, the links within the document or you can scan uh, the QR code at the bottom. There's, we have a uh, video that we did to kind of explain the situation and, and, and why it is we're asking uh, for people uh, for an operational referendum. And I think, you know, the big things that we want to take away from this, and I know Molly's going to touch on it during the um, uh, annual meeting and her financial um, treasurer's report, and so I don't want to take too much from that. Uh, but a couple things I do want to point out is uh, we're looking at, uh, it's a $5 million reoccurring operational referendum uh, for district operation maintenance and staffing cost. Uh, the mill rate impact for this referendum is about $0.04 cents per 100000 We know that... People have more than a hundred thousand dollar home, but we always put it per hundred thousand so people can scale it up based on their value of their house. We think that an average home is more, you know, is a little bit closer to five hundred thousand dollars in our school district. So it's about a twenty dollar increase in property tax for somebody owning a uh, five hundred thousand dollar home uh, in our in our school district. Um, you know, things that are a real challenge for us are why now uh, we've had revenue limits or caps that have not kept up. Uh, with inflation, and we've we've fallen behind inflation. We've also coupled that with declining student enrollment. Not that people are coming to our district and leaving because they don't like what they have. It's uh, as if you're in the housing market and as you're seeing things, it's very expensive to live in our district, and it's very hard for young families to find housing in our district. And so we've been graduating classes of 450, 460 students, and we've been bringing in kindergarten classes of 300 310, 320. And although we've made up some of those differences throughout the course of the year or through the different age levels, it, it hasn't been totally the same. Um, so we have some of those challenges uh, ahead of us. It's not unique to the Hudson School District. About 85% of school districts in the state are in declining enrollment mode. And that kind of uh, matches about what it is nationally. About 85% of school districts nationally are in a declining enrollment mode. And a lot of that has to do with birth rates that have never quite rebounded since the 2008 recession. Uh, and so, you know, all of these things kind of come together for a, for a perfect storm. We have, uh, we, we come to the voters asking for this after the first one did not pass about a year and a half ago in, Mar uh, in April of 2023. We asked the voters why it didn't pass. The feedback we got was you need to scale it back, which we did. We went from 8 million now down to 5. And they also told us you need to do some cuts before you come back and ask. So we've cut about $1.8 million in staffing uh, out of our budget. Uh, and so we've reduced, reduced staffing. And then in addition, they said, can you start to uh, eliminate some of the properties that the district has that they're not using? And so the UU property was listed, and it's currently under an accepted offer. Uh, and we're working, trying to work with the city to get that annexed in, because that's the contingency on the offer. Uh, the school district's administrative office building, people said we needed to put that for sale, move into empty space in one of the buildings. So that has been uh, listed for sale, uh, and we've had some traffic as far as, you know, showings and things like that. So we're anticipating getting that sold here in the next six to nine months as well. So we're, we're hearing what people have said and what they would like us to do, and we're following up on that. But now we need some help on the revenue side. And so... That's really what this referendum is about. Uh, we have an upcoming, we have some upcoming meetings in which we're going to be, uh, informational meetings, which we're gonna be talking about these. I think the uh, first one is coming up next, is it, Tracy, next Monday, I believe, uh, is our first uh, referendum, and that'll be right here at the high school. So if people wanna come and ask questions and, and work through that, we'll be here at the high school next Monday night. So that's what I have for a referendum update. Any questions about the referendum update? Seeing none, then next up, uh, Dave, overview of teaching and learning board reports. Yep, thank you very much. So as you know, uh, we frequently bring from teaching and learning reports on different curricular areas, and I wanted to provide an overview of those reports. And at the end, if there's feedback, if you have questions, if there's things that you would um, like reports on, we can certainly incorporate those into the plan. Um, so on the left-hand column, you'll see the board work sessions. On the right, the regular board meetings. So we've already had the summer school review and right now we're doing the overview of the plan. So moving forward, the next report will be on tutor.com. 
We mentioned tutor.com a few weeks ago. That's the resource that's available for all high school students where they can um, get immediate real-time support from certified teachers on the classes they take at high school, help with homework and so forth, ACT, um, test preparation, a lot of great resources. Um, we'd certainly like to see that used even more uh, because we think it's such a valuable resource. Then at the board meeting, October 14th, elementary literacy, CKLA is the approved curriculum that we added. Um, elementary teachers are doing a great job digging in already. Elementary literacy is a big lift. It's such a huge portion of the elementary days, so it's a um, lot of work, but teachers are doing a great job of um, figuring that all out. Then on October 28th, we have um, course proposals. This would be where we would bring new proposals that um, we can consider for the upcoming year. I have and calendar. You'll see back-to-back -back, um, conversations about the school calendar. That's when we plan on having those conversations. Then December 9th, um, state report card. We will have received our state report card. This will be an analysis and an overview of those results. December 16th, System for Learning. This is um, a product that we'll be bringing for you to take a look at. We're very proud. Our rigor teamwork inclusion group worked on this. Um, it essentially outlines guiding principles and the um, overall practices that we have in each of the areas in teaching and learning, from curriculum to instruction to learning environment to family engagement. It provides clarity and consistency to make sure everyone knows and we're speaking the same language. Um, then we go into academic career planning. We've had some conversations about that. Um, we're ramping that up and bolstering our supports in academic career planning, making sure that all kids, when they graduate from Hudson High School, they have a good sense of what options they have that align to their talents and their skills. Then we go into elementary media and coding. Um, that will be a, a fun presentation. That um, program continues to grow. Work-based learning in February. Work-based learning is the report that um, we usually have two folks that will come and present on the many different opportunities we have that expose our students to the world of work and a lot of different programs that we'll review at that point. Health and Phi Ed followed by business and marketing. Then an update on family engagement. We have the team with family engagement that's doing great work at uh, more meaningfully engaging our families in the work that we do in our schools followed by secondary math. Um, there we'll review our implementation of algebra, which is a new program this year, and then we'll look at geometry, algebra two, and the other upper level electives at that point that we'll be implementing next year. And then we get into the era of year-end reports where you don't want teaching and learning reports because you're hearing from a lot of folks. So we have some open dates there. Um, just a reminder, we align these to our curriculum improvement process. So when we're implementing a new program, we bring those reports to you as well as when we're considering a new program for your approval before we officially adopt. So with that, what questions do you have? Dave, I just wanna clarify, folks, um, board members can make requests for teaching and learning reports, particularly we got those two open dates at the work sessions, one in November and one in April. Um, they can always request it, just, you know, you probably need a month in advance to know what the subject matter is that they want to report. Yeah, a on. month would be fantastic. And yeah, we're not held just to those dates. We can have more than one report in an evening. But yeah, certainly if there are ideas that come up, things you're hearing about, you'd like to learn more, let us know. Okay. Mr. President. Yes. Um, Speaking of things that we'd like to learn more about, I think the tutor.com might be a good idea to talk about because mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of parents asking, how do I do it, where do I go, what does it look like, who's mm -hmm. teaching it, that kind of stuff. Sure. So I think that would be interesting. And then the academic career planning. Uh, when we talked as a community, I know that was something that was really important to uh, a lot of the people that were present. So that might be interesting to hear more about Perfect. what how they're doing that and what that looks like. Yep, we can absolutely do that. And then also um, there'll be a newsletter um, or a column in the newsletter about tutor.com to get that out to everyone a little more specifically. Excellent, thank you. Sure, you bet. All right, any other questions, comments? Then last in our reports are, is our annual required report on seclusion and restraint, Tara. Correct, this is our annual report before I submit the data to DPI. I am very proud to share last year's data um, I think it's important to compare. I have all the previous years. As we've stated before, we've been flagged for 
too many seclusions and restraints, and we've worked really hard in the stu student service department on prevention before the seclusion restraint. This year, our total number is 27. If you scroll down and look at years past, we were in the 100, triple digit. Um, it's important to notice our student number went down, but we're still sitting around the same students. What we were seeing is students, and all of our students who have had seclusion or restraint are all students who have received special ed services. Um, but what had happened in years past, we had the same students receive multiple seclusions and restraints over and over again. So we've spent a lot of work on that in this past year, and our data shows that. So I'm very proud to report our decrease in numbers. All right. Mr. President? Yes. I just had a... There you go. Okay. Um, on the uh, EP Rock and uh, Hudson Middle School, so when you see like a school with one or five, and we have so few, but I'm just kind of curious, when you have five, is it really just the number of students there that have IEPs, that's why you see that? Or is it, because they're all separate students, right? Correct, that's five different students. Okay. Yep. So it's just, maybe that's just the group of kids at that particular time. It could be, for sure. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thanks for the hard work. Mr. President? Yes, just, again. I know you said this, Tara, but just going to the second page and seeing the dramatic drop between just last year and this year, it's not like it was stair-stepping over time. It's a, and it was going down, but Wow, bravo, that's fantastic to see. I double, triple, quadruple checked. Um, one thing we put in place was all of the reports came to me to view and I saw a decline just on that. So um, it is quadruple checked that those are our numbers. And we will be celebrating that with staff. I mean, we still don't wanna celebrate. We have 20 some seclusion and restraints, but um, there is some celebration in this. Well, I think the, uh, the other interesting number is the number of students involved. Um, it's actually up. The student number of students is up over the last two years, but the number of incidents are way down. So back when we had 27 students accounting for 180 incidents, now we have 21 on 27 incidents. So that's also showing less repeat incidents with these students. That's great. All right, any other questions? All right, thank you for that report. We always like positive reports. Um, now I will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda with the expenditures as stated in the document A sub three. Mr. President. Rob. I move approval of the consent items and that the Chief Financial and Operations Officer be authorized to pay bills in the amount of $1,486,369.22. Is there a second? Second. All right, we have a motion and second pursuant to procedure. There's no comment. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. Next up for action is the preliminary budget for 24-25. Bonnie, it's your show. All right. Uh, no. Page nine, yeah. You wanna do page nine? Okay, um, so we had a lot of, the board has done a lot of work this year um, working on our operating budget. As it's been talked about, we have constraints facing us with revenue limits as well as declining enrollment. Um, but the major assumptions that we built the budget on this year, um, the state did increase revenue limit calculation at $325 per pupil. Um, our state aid per pupil was set at $742. Special ed categorical aid is estimated to stay at 33.3%. Um, our July 1 equalization aid, we are projecting a decrease of about $2.2 .2 million. So we don't lose that ability to spend the money, but that difference shifts to the tax levy versus the, um, receiving state aid. Um, we are estimating our, that our mill rate will stay level at 8.24, um, and that's an over, an overall property valuation increase of 7.2%. Um, last year, that was 10.16%. The state average this year is 7.69. So we're right in the ballpark of how the rest of the state is doing. 
Um, as Dr. Ouellette indicated, we did reduce expenditures and staffing of about $988,000 um, this year. Over the last two years, that's about $1.8 million we've made in reductions. Um, employment settlements have been built into the budget. All settlements have been finalized. Um, health insurance premiums increased 3%. There was 0% in dental insurance. Um, and again, um, the school district did formally accept an offer on the UU property. So we anticipate closing that at the end of the school year. And then also, it was also noted that we did put the um, administrative service center, the district office is for sale currently. So the second page is kind of a breakdown of our budget. Um, overall, um, our revenues increased 0.32%, and then our expenditure is reduced 0.99%. We are um, projecting a deficit at the end of the year of about $500,000, um, but the board has made that commitment to take that out of fund balance for this year. There is also a, the capital project expenditures. There is $7 million that's designated in the fund balance that we anticipate using to pay for referendum expenditures this year. So there's a total of $15 million that is allocated for those expenses and we anticipate using about half of it for this year. Okay, questions for Bonnie? Mr. President. Yes, Lynn. Is, how is the referendum dollars impacted in this budget that we're looking at? So. At this point, we the referendum dollars are not included. This would be assuming we would not have a referendum. So in October, we will bring you two budgets, one that will have the referendum, one that won't. And then depending how the vote comes, we will adopt that one. Thank you. Bonnie, do you wanna explain, however, if the referendum would pass, we would reduce the debt service down so that it equals out? If, I'm sorry. If the referendum was to pass, we would lower the debt service Correct. prepayment down so that it's not a huge hit to property taxpayers. Correct. We would, okay. Correct. All right, is there any other questions? This, this is again, a document that we've seen in some form for probably it's September, so five months and uh, and 10 meetings, that's two meetings a month, eight meetings, because we don't, don't have double meetings, uh, the other ones, but still, um, over that course of time, there's changes taken into account, such as enrollment changes and things that happen in Madison. Um, so, but yet, we still have to pass this budget currently now in order for it to be considered by the public at our annual meeting in one hour. And then even that budget then possibly could change depending on information that we received. Correct. It'll be finalized once we get our third Friday count. Yep. Yep. All right. Any other questions, comments? Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Right. I didn't see. Who, who made the motion? All right. Megan did. All right. When we're all on a straight line like this, I can't. I'm used to our U shape. Um, all right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. The ayes have it, and the budget is unanimously approved. Next up is a second reading of a policy that has already had a first reading, and that's the new policy for memorials and funerals. Bonnie, anything to add here different from the last reading? No, um, we're just, um, this policy provides guidance to administration on how to handle memorials and funerals in the district. Um, we didn't really have anything adopted, so the board has reviewed it several months, and this is the second reading, but no changes from the last meeting. Again, not something that um, WASB or the Wisconsin Association of School Boards necessarily is, has a standard policy for, but Correct, they did not have a template we utilized, so we did work, look at neighboring districts, um, a policy that they had in place, and met with our Hudson lead and kind of came up with this policy of what was, what was customized to the district. Yeah, another example of a policy that came into being not because of any perceived problem or defect, it's just a um, good idea to have in case issues were to arise, then we'd have something for guidance. 
Is there a motion to approve the second reading? So moved. Second. Motion by Bob, second by Lynn. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. And that policy is adopted and will now uh, be implemented. All right, next up is an update to policy 458, school wellness. Uh, Tara, this is yours because it's in your area or sphere, I assume. Uh, it's Bonnie and I. Um, go for it. Yeah, okay. Bonnie shared last time, so I'm a little rusty on this one at the moment. So annually, the district is required to have a district wellness um, policy, and we are re required to review the policy. Um, we did identify that there was three things that weren't included in our policy. Um, it's a triennial assessment, the updated um, inform the public, so basically telling the public um, that we have this policy and how we enforce it, and then also the USDA non-discrimination statement. So we added those items to the current policy, so there was no change in the intent other than adding that information. That's again, example of changing an existing policy to make it compliant with changes in the law. All right, again, this has already had a first reading approved. Is there a motion to approve a second reading? So moved. All right. Second, right. Megan. All right, thanks, <laughs> Megan. I could always tell Molly's voice, I guess, but all right. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. And the update to school wellness has its second reading approved and will be implemented. I'll now, that concludes our agenda. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn until our annual meeting, which will begin promptly at 7 p.m. So moved. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. We stand adjourned.